I want to talk to you about cargo van business driving for UPS. How do you start? The thing is that what a lot of folks, when they think about driving for UPS, they think about box trucks, step vans, or other types of vehicles. But in today's conversation, I want to share with you that you can actually start a profitable cargo van business driving for UPS. In other words, you are actually an owner operator. You are an independent contractor for UPS. So here are the steps I, I really want you to pay attention to. The first thing you want to do here is you need to identify your niche in uh, cargo delivery. You need to understand UPS is going to assign you one, two, or three, or even more dedicated routes once you have a, a once you have identified a profitable niche. But sometimes they will actually do uh, they will do the work for you. Sometimes they want you to do the the, the the preliminary work. What do I mean by that? It means that you need to actually look into look into your geography, your state, your city, your your municipality, your your township, your county, everything around you, and see what the what the routes are available. Let me give you an example. If you are currently, let's say you are in New York or you are in Washington State, you want to see, uh, and you are in. Um, in Seattle, for instance, you want to look around and see what kind of uh, routes are used by uh, FedEx, DHL, and USPS, but not UPS. So there is an there's an opening here, right? So what you want to do here is that you want to go and pitch that route to your local uh, UPS logistics manager. So what will happen here is that they, they will they will study the uh, the trains in your area and see if the route itself is profitable. But once the cool thing is once they assign you a dedicated route, you own that route. As long as you don't act, you don't actually f up, you are good to go. Okay, you can you can you can uh, work that route. And you can make money over and over and over, not a problem. Again, you are not a uh, UPS UPS driver, in house driver. You're not you're not a UPS employee. You are a UPS uh, independent contractor. In other words, UPS will sign a contract with you, and you will be a separate entity, but you will be uh, collaborating in a con- in a contractual agreement with UPS. Okay, so you will you will deliver, you will haul loads on behalf of UPS and they will pay you a specific uh, predetermined sort of rate. So this is kind of cool. But yeah, you need to identify your niche in cargo delivery. What kind of uh, cargo you want to deliver? Briefer, hazmat, regular cargo or OTR, so on and so forth. Boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. The second thing you want to do here is to create a business plan. So as I said before, UPS is going to help you in some cases by actually giving you the business, quote unquote, the business. In other words, they, they will give you the routes, they give you everything. But in some cases, if, if there is competition, you're going to have to demonstrate to UPS that you really want to have, you want to own that route. So it's uh, and the best way to do this is to actually uh, create a business plan. And I'm talking about a, a, a clear business plan from head to from uh, A to Z. So you will explain to a UPS. You talk about things like target markets, you know, like uh, the kind of uh, delivery uh, areas you want to focus and the kind of customers you want to go after. Remember, when we talk about being a UPS independent owner, independent contractor, UPS will actually will bring you the, 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 the deliveries. But you also have to have a clear idea about the, the loads you want to haul and the areas you want to actually uh, you, you want to actually cover. Okay, so you need to have you need to create a business plan and creating a business plan is kind of cool. Also, because if your pitch to UPS doesn't work, you can pitch this. You can pitch the same uh, business model to FedEx, to DHL or USPS. So this is kind of cool. The third thing you want to do here is to register your business. Remember, you are a separate separate entity. You do not work for UPS. If you are looking, if you want to have a cargo van business drive, if you want to do cargo van business driving for UPS, you basically you have to consider yourself a separate entity. So we're talking about you being a, a partnership, for instance, like an LLC, a partnership, a, a C corporation, or if you want to look at it from a, a tax point of view, you can also uh, convert yourself into an S corporation. So the bottom line here is you need to have, you need to have a a separate entity. And we're talking about, when we talk about having a separate entity, we're talking about you having also an EIN, an employer identification number, which will help you actually separate your personal affairs from your business affairs. And you want to, you want to have that because this will also help you open a business, make account for your cargo van business driving for UPS. The bottom line here is what? The bottom line here is that you need to do things the legit way so that UPS can actually see you as a professional. That's what you want to have. Your, your reputation is really important here. 
Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about cargo van business driving for UPS. How to start one. The next thing you want to do here is to obtain necessary permits and licenses. And this is an important element. And if you remember, I was just telling you earlier that earlier that uh, you need to actually identify your niche. You need to know the kind of loads you want to haul. So, for instance, if you want to go uh, after reefer, if you want to go after hazmat, if you want to go after uh, federally sensitive uh, substances like uh, like anything that is uh, like I would say a radioactive, like nuclear or whatever. If you want to deal with uh, perishables, so if you want to do hazmat, so the bottom line is what. Bottom line, and if you want to do OTR, if you want to do OTR, then uh, you, if you are crossing, if you are crossing state boundaries, then you might need a CDL, okay, or you might need to have authority. By the way, you need to actually comply with FM, uh, FM, uh, CSA sort of uh, guidelines. And uh, if you are going, like, if you drive, if you drive a vehicle that uh, a vehicle which uh, which has a, a weight that is above twenty six thousand uh, pounds, then you need to have a CDL. The bottom line is what. The bottom line here is that you need to have a clear idea about the necessary permits and licenses that you need in your cargo van business driving. And you need to set those things up before you actually pitch your business model to UP, to UPS. Before you, you actually start driving, you start driving for UPS, you need to actually do the preliminary work on your end the, in terms of getting the necessary permits and licenses. If you have any question about, you, about the kind of licenses you need in your area, let us know in the comment section what you want to do here is you want to let us know where you are at your city your your state and uh basically i will let you know the kind of permits and licenses you need one thing i also need to say here is that make sure that your niche is in uh, in sync with the types of uh, the types of permits and licenses you you get because otherwise if, if there is a sort of some if there is some kind of uh how do you, how do you call it mismatch if you have a mismatch between the permits and licenses you have versus the niche you want to go after you're not going to qualify and ups will reject your application because ups is very thorough when they re when they review applications for for a cargo van business driving as a, as a ups owner operator they will they are they tend to be very very granular they tend to be very thorough so be thorough as well Next thing I want you to do here is that you need to choose the right cargo van. See, the thing is that when we talk about you having cargo van business driving for UPS, UPS is not going to supply the, the cargo van to you. I mean, they might in some cases if they have a, if they have a capacity in their inventory, but usually what they do is they will actually will rely on you to have uh, the equipment to be ready to start working. And then once you have that, they will sign a contract with you and they will give you a, a good contract, by the way, though. But in, in some cases, some rare cases, they might help you actually uh, get a, a cargo van in the, or either lease it, but they do not help you with business credit. So if you have poor credit, they're not going to help you get a get business credit to acquire a cargo van so you can drive for them. But if you have good credit or acceptable credit, they might help you in terms of leasing. Okay, And remember that when we talk about choosing the right cargo van, everything goes back to what I said earlier about your niche, right? depending on upon the type of cargo you want to haul and if you want to have a let's say for instance if you want to haul reefer every, let's say anything refrigerated then you need to have the right equipment for that if you want to if you want to haul hazmat then you need to have the right equipment for that if you want to haul let's say like whatever if you want to haul perishables you need to have the right equipment for that so everything revolves around you having the right equipment very important so you when we talk about the right equipment we're also talking about safety features such as ABS, for instance. You have airbags, you have backup cameras because see, you got to really protect yourself and your cargo and your packages. It's all about uh, safety. You want to also consider the van size. So you need to have a balance, a great balance between ample cargo space and maneuverability. Those, those, those two elements are key. You also need to hire and train drivers if at some point you want to scale. Let's say you've been uh, driving for UPS for a while now and you want to really diversify. You could actually hire and train drivers so that instead of having uh, one uh, one uh, cargo van, you have a fleet of cargo van and all of those are are actually put into uh, into uh, 
availability when it comes to UPS. In other words, you are going to, del to deliver packages for UPS and you will sign a contract with UPS and you will cover certain areas, especially when it comes to uh, last mile and middle mile. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about the uh, cargo van business driving for UPS. How to start one? Next, I, want, I really want to talk to you about, uh, you need to understand insurance and liability considerations. And this is kind of important because a lot of people are just saying, that, well, you know, yeah, you know, if you want to start a cargo van business uh, with uh, U UPS, UPS will cover, will cover you. No, they do not do that. Remember, we said earlier that uh, basically UPS is considering you as a separate entity. So you are on your own, so to speak. I mean, they'll pay you well, they pay you pretty well, So you, but you are a separate LLC S corporation or C corporation. So UPS is not actually having some UPS is not considering you a subsidiary or like an affiliate. No, you are a contractual party, like one of, of uh, thousands that UPS uh, actually engages, uh, engages with on a single on a single day. OK, so you need to understand your insurance and liability considerations. First, you want to get proper commercial vehicle insurance. Very important because this will safeguard your, your van cargo and business from unexpected mishaps stuff happens stuff happens and those mi mishaps you do not want one mishap to sort of doom your your cargo van business okay and remember personal auto insurance will not cut it for a won't, won't really cut it for a business use so that's number one the, the, that's the first thing we need to really have a clear idea about and uh, the second thing is that liability considerations are kind of vital here and because in case of accidents, you need to actually protect yourself and your assets. It's all about covering your, your, your ass anyway. So that's where liability insurance comes in. Okay. And liability insurance covers the cost if you are at fault in an accident. Again, I just want to really emphasize that if you are a cargo van business driver for UPS, you are an owner operator. You are an independent contractor. Okay, so in a nutshell, do not skip on insurance. This is your safety net. Don't think because you are a cargo van business driver for UPS, you are covered by UPS when it comes to insurance. No. So, and if you have any question, talk to uh, an insurance expert, get the right coverage and ensure peace of mind as you embark on your UPS cargo van journey. If you have any question, let us know again in the comment section. Tell us your geography. Okay, where where like city and state you're actually riding from, and we'll let you know specifically the what kind of uh, stuff you need to you need to take care of. Next thing I want you to do here is to provide a, an excellent customer service package. I mean, this I mean said this way it might sound a little cheesy, but uh, the thing is that when we talk about customer service, we have three layers of of customer service. So first of all, you have customer service vis-a-vis -vis the the recipients of the package you deliver. In other words, you need to treat that uh, that sort of uh, last mile, quote unquote last mile sort of uh, recipients very professionally. You got to be courteous. You got to be uh, professional punctuality is, is another important element here. And uh, the thing here is that, you know, even if uh, like when you actually get in contact with uh, that uh, last mile, quote unquote, last mile delivery, like last mile recipients, that person, that client is looking at you as a UPS uh, representative. He or she doesn't know that you are a UPS independent contractor, that you have been assigned a dedicated route and you are trying to do your best to uh, to actually uh, to uh, ride that route. OK, and so th that's really important. So that that's the first layer of customer service. I want to draw your attention to your 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 interaction with the clients. The second the second element here is that you have your uh, your interaction with UPS as, a, as an organization. So customer service is so important because UPS is actually your customer too. You know, UPS is still your customer. So this is an important element to to have a, a clear, like, a, again, we're talking here about the same rules of punctuality, the same rules of uh, professionalism, the same rules of, uh, like, the same rules of courtesy also. So when, you, when UPS, for instance, is asking you to haul certain loads at 1 a.m., and they ask you like the night before there is a way to answer even if you are not going to do it there is a way to talk to what uh, to talk within the within the, a, uh, a professional environment 
So that's the second layer. The third layer when it comes to customer service here is uh, customer service vis-a-vis -vis your other, uh, your peers. So you have a lot of, you have uh, thousands of drivers that are driving, they're hauling loads for UPS. This is how you treat them. This is how you talk to them. This is how you interact with them. So professionalism is uh, number one here also. So those are the three layers I want you to pay attention to. When you think about the cargo van business driving for UPS, how to start one and how to be professional. Let me talk to you about how to promote your cargo van business. And this is a, this is a, the last step here. Now you might be thinking, why do I need to promote my cargo van business? Well, for many reasons. Number one, you want to diversify your uh, the uh, the your eggs because if you put all your eggs in the UPS basket, something were to happen, you are toast, and you do not want that, right? So you really want to uh, basically. Uh, you want to advertise now. When we talk about advertising your uh, UPS uh, cargo van business, we basically are saying that you need to do things in a, how do I call it? You need to be a little discreet because you can't do it like openly. You can't do it like directly because you do not want to conflict with the UPS policies. You do not want to uh, portray yourself as a UPS representative or, or as a UPS driver because you're not a UPS in-house driver. So in other words, you know, UPS is not going to want to uh, look at you because you are a UPS contractor. Those are different. Those are slight differences. Okay. So, but you still need to promote your cargo van business. Why? Because there could be opportunities actually uh, available right now with DHL, with you, with the UPS, or not UPS, with USPS or uh, FedEx. And you do not want to actually uh, just uh, focus on one, uh, one route, one dedicated route or, or, or a series of them and forget about the others. Okay. And uh, so that's number one. Number two, basically, if you're promoting your cargo van business, you are trying to be relevant in the, in the, uh, in the, in your geography vis-a-vis -vis your uh, B2C customers. Because when we talk about uh, FedEx, we talk about the uh, USPS, we talk about DHL, we are speaking about B2B customers. But you also need to uh, go into the B2C to sort of have a clear idea what's, ha what's happening. And uh, so that's, uh, that's important. You also want to promote your cargo van business because you want to seize opportunities like what we call one-off opportunities. Let's say somebody is just calling you to do uh, OTR, like, you know, driving from uh, California to uh, Washington State or from New York to Jersey or from Connecticut to Jersey, for instance. Then that's kind of cool because it really, it really allows you to have a clear idea about what the kind of benefits you can expect if you were to promote your cargo van business the proper way. Now, when we talk about promoting your cargo van business, you do not have to have a website. You can have a, a social media page, okay? And again, it's all about promoting your cargo van business first. You just happen to be a contractor for UPS, but you're not actually sort of, um, how do I say this? You're not going to uh, confuse, quote unquote, your business with a UPS uh, business. You are a business that contracts with UPS, but you do not want to associate yourself 100% with UPS. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I just want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We're talking about how to uh, start a cargo van business driving for UPS. So you want to identify your, your niche in cargo van delivery, create a business plan, register your business, obtain necessary permits and licenses, choose the right cargo van, hire and train drivers, understand insurance and liability considerations, provide an excellent customer service, and promote your cargo van business. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.